Online activity by Russia bots, trolls and automated accounts has increased by 4,000% following the Salisbury poisoning and alleged chemical attack in Syria. Government analysis has identified what they call Kremlin-inspired accounts that repeatedly post messages to spread disinformation and distort the truth. For more, let's bring in Sky's defence correspondent, Alistair Bunkle. So just explain to us what the government is alleging here. Very extensive research they've done with the Atlantic Council, which is a think tank, based in Washington. And they've looked into a large number of Twitter accounts that have varying forms of activity, but all with the same theme, and that is a pro-Russian theme. Now, that varies from what you and I would probably classify as a bot, so someone who might be perhaps paid to sit in a troll factory in St. Petersburg and push out a Russian message continually throughout a day, often in a very aggressive and abusive way. That's on one end of the scale. The other end of the scale is individuals who might be far more independent of thought, but use their Twitter account to prolifically uh, support messages that are anti-British government. And so you've got that kind of wide range of Twitter users that in the last couple of weeks with, firstly, in Salisbury and events there, and then latterly, the debate as to whether or not to strike Syria, there's been a huge increase in that activity, which has now been identified by the government. And they've named and shamed uh, a couple of these accounts, but just highlighted how this is going on as a Russian tactic. So they've highlighted what's going on. What are they going to do with that information? Well, I mean, it's very difficult because you have to preserve free speech, quite rightly so, and I don't think the British government, uh, if, and I'm not speaking on their behalf, but I don't think they would ever aim to do anything but that. So some of those individuals have a perfect right to tweet at will and tweet what they want, even if that message disagrees with the British government, even if that message uh, the British government believes uh, contains lies a lot of the time. You cannot just close down that account. You cannot just close down those voices. In terms of what you might describe as Russian bots, so people who are actively under the pay of the Kremlin and working for them and pushing their message, then you can get into realms of sort of um, counter cyber activity, if you like. But essentially what the British government needs to try and do, and it has started to do, although let's remember the Russian government are very, very good at this. What they've tried to do is put out their own narrative, if you like, so make sure that they counter the Russian narrative with their own narrative. And you've seen the British government start to do that a lot more. Now, the British government identified two Twitter accounts specifically that they claim have been pushing a Russian narrative and spreading lies. Uh, one of them we have, I've contacted, and we have him uh, now live. He's yes, called let, Ian. Yeah, let's bring in uh, Ian now. Thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us uh, today, Ian. So you've been identified by the government in this research as being a Russian bot, are you? Uh, that is a 100% total lie and complete fabrication by the UK government. Why do you think they've identified you and singled you in particular out then, Ian? Uh, they are singling out for, for attack anyone who calls out the UK government lies on what has been happening recently. They have attacked me specifically because my Twitter account has recently got quite a lot of traction and a lot, lot of... Um, impressions, views on it, so that um, lots of people can see. I mean, the, the government's lies are very transparent and very easy to see. And anybody who applies a smattering of critical thinking will immediately call out numerous lies and it, the government position just completely collapses. Well, you, had, you had Major General Jonathan Swan on recently on Sky News and he started off the conversation with what possible motive would Assad have to carry out a chemical weapons attack when it was guaranteed that that would bring the wrath of the whole world down on him and give the UK and US governments the pretext to bomb it. He wouldn't do it. He is not the stupidest man in the world. He's survived seven years of brutal war against terrorists. Well, well if not who, then? The jihadi terrorists that the Wahhabi Salafis 
Jaish al-Islam, who controlled that area, staged the attack. What actually happened in Douma in the attack is that Assad bombed the area as part of his fight to clear out the last of the terrorists. Assad had, had already recaptured 95% of Ghouta, which was this terrorist stronghold just outside Damascus. He had I just want to bring... I just want to bring in our defence correspondent, Alistair Bunkle, who's with me as well, Ian, uh, to talk to you on this point. Ian, two questions. One of that is, and this is what the British government, one of the reasons they've highlighted your account, is that the argument is, is that you have consistently and prolifically taken an anti-British standpoint. No, and... no, I've taken pro-British life. That is completely false. What do you mean by Britain? And you, you mean... and you accuse... And you accuse no, the no. British government of mistruths. No, 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 but, no, no. But they and point out that in 2012, you tweeted this. Please, I think we can see a tweet finish. that you put up in 2012 that says that you were voting for Ron Paul. OK? Well, so you were saying you're going to vote for... I voted for Ron Paul, you said. And then a year later, in 2013, you tweeted okay. this, which says you are now starting okay. to think about moving to America. OK, oh, I will shortly be moving to America, which meant that in 2012, you could not have voted for Ron Paul. So they the question authority. your authenticity Let when tweeting. Your point. You're trying to cut me off. You're trying to prevent me from speaking, aren't you? No, no, so no, no far away. I was just putting that point to you, but please answer it. OK. In 2012, I campaigned online for Ron Paul during the primaries. Vigorously. I've got loads of tweets. But you said you were voting my... for him, and the British government say that you were therefore yes, telling lies in yes, 2012. Yes, so why should your yes. account be believed I now? Paid. And instead of saying I supported Ron Paul in 2012, I said I voted for him. Now I don't know, I can't remember when I did that one tweet out okay. of the 150,000 okay. that I've done. Let, let's just get I, back I to the point about today, though, and the accusations today, Ian. You are denying that you're a Russian bot. You're saying you have absolutely no links with the Kremlin. So the material that you retweet, the government's identified 100 posts a day from your account, uh, 1,300 no, posts well, in 12 no. days. How do you check the veracity of the information that you retweet, the people that you're retweeting? Do you know them? Do you have Kremlin contacts? I have no Kremlin contacts whatsoever. I do not know any Russians. I have no contact with the Russian government or anything to do with them. I've got no contact with spies. I am an ordinary British citizen, ordinary British citizen, who happens to do research on what is going on in the current neocon wars, which are being fought in Syria at this very moment. I, uh, I check out what is happening by credible, credible journalists. Now, there aren't any of those on Sky News. And there aren't any others in, in the whole of the Western media. The only people that, the only people that are, are reporting with a, with a voice of reason or sanity or honesty are Peter Hitchens, who's questioned why the hell would Assad use chemical weapons when he's winning, and Tucker Carlson in the US, who said the same thing. And okay, the former Ian, we are UK running out of time. I just want to let I quickly ask you, look, firstly, I would say, you know, we bring you on to give your view to make it balanced, but do you ever worry that inadvertently you might be part of a Kremlin propaganda machine? Inadvertently. No. no. The question is, what does it mean by being pro-Britain or pro-American? Does it mean being pro the interests of 60 million British people? Or does it mean the clique in the UK government, the cabinet, that are doing things for their own personal benefit and their cronies? In the arms companies, BAE systems. Theresa May's husband runs a large hedge fund or private equity fund, which is the largest shareholder of BAE systems. Do you think BAE systems went up because Theresa May started bombing Syria? Yes. They did. She's got a conflict of interest. That's one. So uh, uh, I am speaking for the vast majority of British people. 59.9 million out of 60 million English people, or Scots. I, I'm not speaking for the UK government, who do not work for the British people. 
And they plainly okay. ignore the wishes of the British people because hardly anyone in Britain wants Theresa May to bomb Syria. It's less than 25% want Theresa May to start a war All right. Ian, I'm afraid we have run out of time. Thank you very much indeed for coming on and putting your side uh, of that across. Uh, Ian, uh, there, talking to us via Skype. Thank you. We're going to return now to the news that Arsenal manager Arsenal